Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, February 24, 2024. I hope that you're all doing well. It's another beautiful Sabbath morning and it's a good day to be alive. The sun is bright. Maybe the sun isn't shining where you are, but I know that the light of the Lord is shining in your heart. And may you continue to bask in his fullness and in his light. And may you experience the joy of his love today. And may you share that joy with someone. You know, have a wonderful day and don't let anything steal your joy today because God is good. You're alive, you're in good health, or you're in a good state of mind, and that's a good thing. Now, our reading today, it comes to us from Genesis chapter 1, reading verse 26 to 31. And it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful! and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree healing seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the field, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. 31 and last says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And I say, Amen. Isn't God good? This is such a beautiful passage of scripture, a reminder of where we came from. We came from the hands of God, and that is good news. That is such good news. And so important for us to know and to understand that we were created. We weren't called forth like the other creatures of the earth. Which means that we are extra special and that we are important to the creator, God. He said that he went down into the earth and he took the time to form us. And he said that he created us in his image. In his likeness so when you look at yourself in the mirror you are seeing a representation of God so it therefore means that God has two eyes he has a nose a mouth he has two ears we have hair and hands and feet and fingers and toes and the whole, the whole works and that is important for us to know because it gives us a sense of identity knowing where we came from there is a message that is going around the world telling us that we evolve from an evolutionary process and that defeat the whole matter of creation it is disrespectful to God. You are in your right to think what you like and you are free to believe what you like. But as for me, I believe in the undiluted word of God and I know in my heart that I was created. You might ask the question, how do you know that you were created? All right, let's play a game. Evolution says that we came from nothing and evolved into something 
or we came from one species of animal to the next you know specifically monkey and then creation said that god took the time to form me and to make me hands and foot and eyes and everything if you think about evolution and the logics and the foundation of the evolutionary process it says that one thing evolve and keep evolving that's the basis of evolution doctrine now here is my question if i evolve from a monkey why is it that i am a different creature now shouldn't i remain in the same species that's my question but i somehow just jump out of that species completely into a new species so i am not following the natural order of things according to the evolutionary process that's my question i evolve from one thing why do i stop evolving as soon as i reach a certain stage that's not evolution at least not according to any real logic so the house of evolution crumbles like a deck of cards on that reasoning alone it has no foundation now when you switch to creation it says that you and i were made by an intelligent being and so if we were made by an intelligent being it therefore means that we are also intelligent. It means we can think for ourselves. And it also states that we are not evolving, at least not in the sense that evolution teaches. I would not feel comfortable knowing that I came from a monkey. You understand what I'm saying? No, the Bible says that we were made a little bit lower than the angels that's so valuable and important we are that's how important god regards us and so i was created you were created and it takes the evidentiary proof in the word of god and also faith to believe that now if you don't believe in the word of god and if your belief is that is the white man write the bible and he somehow write it to control you and to control me, then you are going to have a problem understanding what the Spirit is trying to communicate to you because you are stuck on the fact that this book was written to brainwash you, which is not so. The Bible states that holy men of God were moved by the Holy Spirit and were given the inspiration to write the word of God. So this is not fable and fairy tale and something that was come up out of nothing or on a whim. So back to the story. Now, we, as the scripture says, were made in the image of God. And so we should acknowledge that principle and we should be respectful to our bodies. We should not treat our bodies any old owl because when we defile our body we show disrespect to god and we are telling him that god you made a mistake this is not where the hand was supposed to go and this part of my body was supposed to have this kind of marking and this part should have had a hole in it and whatever we we can come up with when whenever we do these things to our bodies that's what we're saying. We're saying that God, you made a mistake. There's a flaw in your design. And is there a flaw in God's design? Or the devil just wants us to believe that there's a flaw in God's design. That is deception. And that's precisely why we have the doctrine of evolution. It is there to rival God's creative power. But it cannot contest, as I stated earlier. It can match in layman terms. And I am not here to batter bruise anyone or to, to code on anyone because people believe what they believe most time because of lack of understanding. And that is why we have to be patient and we have to pray for them and we have to be kind. So not because you know 
and believe and accept one thing mean that you should use it as a button on others. You teach them in love and you guide them in wisdom so that they can understand by the way of the Holy Spirit what is actually true from what is error. Point them to Jesus. That's the only responsibility you and I have been given. Okay? It also states that the trees and the fruit that were created, they were made for our enjoyment. They were made for our food and we were not supposed to originally eat meat. In fact, none of God's creation was eating meat. Meat was introduced after the flood because the vegetation was destroyed. That's when meat was introduced. Eh? Understand? But the original diet was really supposed to be vegetation. That's what it was supposed to be. And so the herbs was there for medicinal purposes. The fruits was there for food and so on. And even the animals, they were eating grass. So the lions, they were eating grass. The bears, they were eating grass. And the zebras, they were eating grass. So everything was eating grass. No animal, no insect, no bird, nothing in creation when it was created in its perfect state was eating flesh. Yeah, Nothing. And I know some people frown on a vegetarian diet. But in truth and in fact, especially now, a vegetarian diet if you adapt, you are saving yourself a heartache of grief because we don't know what they are putting into our food. And believe you me, you don't want to know. It's crazy. So it's better to go green than to stick to the lean, if you get what I mean. Okay, so may we use wisdom and may we ask the Holy Spirit to help us to, you know, grow out of the that kind of lifestyle i know for some of us it takes a little time and it takes a little getting used to but pray the holy spirit will help you you know because i am not fully there either you know and i am praying and asking the holy spirit for strength as you know i seek to go down that path with you all right and so may we this morning take courage in the word of god may we understand what the spirit of god is trying to say to us by his word as i stated earlier the word is not written for us to feel bad about ourselves is not to cow anybody down is not to make anybody feel like we are better than they are it is not to condemn anybody it is dear as a form of guide to point us in the right direction it is a manual, just like when you buy an appliance and you get a manual that tells you how to use that appliance so that you don't break the appliance. It is the same principle with the Word of God. It is there as a manual and a guide so that we don't end up breaking ourselves. You understand? And one more thing. The scriptures say that after God made man, He said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Now, this might be a touchy section for a lot of folks, but I'm not here to condemn anyone. But I'm just telling you what the Word of God said. That the man and the woman was created. And then God said to the man and the woman, Be fruitful and multiply. And at that time when they were created, there were only two beings, a man and a woman. Therefore, if they were only a man and a woman, it means therefore that it could only be a man and a woman that is able to be fruitful and multiply. I will leave that to simmer. I won't dig too much into that aspect this morning. I will take it on another time. But just think about that. Think about that and remember you are special very very special god made you special amen so keep a positive outlook on things and a positive outlook when it comes on to the word of god don't 
alienate yourself and don't follow anybody to throw cold water and to hate the word of God. Because what? It's ne it, it has never harmed anyone. And if we understand the scripture and understand what it is trying to say to us, we will see things very differently. But again, you have to open yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That is how you learn. If when you go to the class and you shut your mind off from what the teacher is trying to say to you, you will never learn. But if you open your mind to the instruction that is being given from your teacher, of course you will leave, you will leave with something. You might not leave with everything or get every understanding, but you will learn something. So, may we allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. May we take comfort and be proud of the fact that we were made and that we were not blown out of nowhere and evolve into something. Take comfort and joy and peace in the fact that God took the time to make you, each and every one of us, and that we are special in his eye. It doesn't matter what anyone say to you, you are special. God made you special and he's coming back for you again because you are important and special to him. So may God continue to bless you. May God continue to show you favor. And may God make his face to shine upon you. Amen.